guys, this is Pradeep and you are watching the final episode of the series, a complete guide of Figma for the UX and UI designers. As promised, this is a bonus episode in which I will take you all through 10 examples and will explain what is the good and bad of these interfaces so that you can take care of them in your next designs. But before we deep dive, kindly like, share and comment on the video if you find it interesting and important for your next design. And if you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you can get all the notifications of our upcoming updates. So without much ado, let's get started. So let's see the yups and nopes of UX and UI. Yups means yes and nopes mean no. So what are the do's and don'ts of UX and UI? We will see this with 10 great examples. The first example, example 1, which one you should use first. So you have an app where it is, it can be any sort of app. So there are two types of screens for you. One is join us and one is welcome back. So when exactly you have to show this particular screen to your users, very important thing. Well, there is no right or wrong here. If you are first time visitor, then show the first screen, that is the A. If you have a returning visitor, then show the second screen, which is the welcome back. So what exactly I mean is that if you have a user who is coming from this app for the first time, show them the join us or registering the app. But if you have a returning visitor who has used this app time and again, you can always direct them to the login section by asking them welcome back. Example 2. In which one user interaction will be better? The first one where we have an image, then various texts and then the buy button which is diagonally at the uh, right side, right bottom side of the uh, app. While in the first one, it is linear top down, the buy button is at the first. Do I hear B? That's pretty much obvious, right? As it follows linear path top to down. However, Gutenberg principle says that A as users tend to read from top left corner and then ends up at the bottom right corner in the form of Z or Z. So you see that how the user is consuming the content, the gravity goes down from left top to the right bottom corner. Let us explain more better start to finish. It is a, a diagonal arrow that goes from top to bottom. bottom and there is a horizontal axis that goes from left to right. So if you see, it is like a Z pattern. There is a zigzag of things, one, two, three, four, five, six. There is a Z pattern that the way a user uh, consumes your content. But there are other Gutenberg principles also where sometimes your users can also consume your content in an F pattern or an X pattern. How do we know how our um, users are consuming our content? It's very easy you can do a heat map test on your user experience on your ux and ui and you can actually check whether they are consuming your content in a f pattern z pattern or an x pattern example three which one is a better user experience a or b in the first one we have all our required field as red asterisk on the second one we don't have any restriction whatsoever well for most of the users it has come across that the first one looks very intimidating and they are being forced to fill up their detail on the other hand the second one looks very friendly and you can also capture whether the person has filled in or not filled in by giving them 
very subtle error message. If they skip the first name or last name, you can always very subtly below the form field or beside the form field, you can always tell them, please fill up your detail. Example four. In which one user will fill the form faster? So this is a bit different. In which one, in the A or the B, you think that the user will fill the form faster? In the first one, we have the labels just above the form field. In the second one, we have the label labels at the left side of the form field. Well we have always found out that the A is a much more faster process as the process is just top-down linear process while the B it is more zigzag because the I movement happens in the zigzag format in the second one. Example 5 Which one is a better toggle button options? So don't think toggle button, creating of toggle button is extremely easy. There are a lot of parameters that has to be taken care of while we are creating a toggle button. The first one we have a hue separation. The second one we have opposite colors or contrast colors. And the C is a totally different format where we are giving some different visual clues. So obviously you can see that the C option is a better option because it, it gives you a visual depth, a visual cue. How? Because you can very clearly understand that there is some level of sliding that can happen and the public uh, button is currently highlighted and not the private. So there is a depth of uh, visual uh, contrast. On the other hand, the B1 is an inverted color and at this point of time we really don't know whether the public is uh, selected or the private is selected. Same goes for the color hues where we have opposite colors but still we don't know whether at this particular state the public is selected or the private is selected. Example 6 Which one is a better progress button option? So many times we when we are updating a um, very large file and say for example we have clicked the submit button and we are waiting for the file to get uploaded in that particular point of time sometimes there are preloader buttons or progress icons that goes on circling or there are certain visual cues like um, some animation happens that, that shows that the form is getting submitted. So which one is a better progress button? Well, for uh, the experts, it is the D which came across as the most user friendly submit button. The first one, the progress icon cannot fit inside the button. It is very ugly design. The second one, the button had to be stretched to feed the loader. Uh, C, the third one, the loader kept outside the button, occupying more space. So our whole square space is being wasted. On the other, the D1, the loader inside the button and color of the button is faded till it is submitted. So it loads inside the button. If the, the entire loader thing happens till the entire loading happens, the color will change to the original blue. Example 7. Which one is a better UX? So over here in the first one, you have your product, you have the product descriptions, then you have the continue shopping link, then you have the view cart link and then there is a checkout button. On the other one, in the B, you have the checkout button at the first and then you have the links of continue shopping and view cart. Which one is a better UX? Well, by placing the main call to action button first, many UI designers make a small mistake. They feel that their main hero button should be at the first. This purely is unnecessary 
as the checkout button's visual weight already garners eyeball. So if you see in the second one, we are actually following down goes the the eyeball goes to the view cart and then again it has to go up to click on the checkout button which is a very bad user experience example 8 which one is a better ux so let us take a case study where we are actually unsubscribing from a newsletter the first one actually gives you the question do you want to unsubscribe from our newsletter and they also give you a visual answer please type yes and press unsubscribe button to unsubscribe right so you have to type in yes and then click on unsubscribe on the other one is very simple you have a question do you want to unsubscribe from our newsletter and then there are two simple button the first one is cancel and the second one is unsubscribe you just need to click on the unsubscribe button to unsubscribe well for uh, though both of them works fine but the first one indirectly gives the user a last moment to reconsider whether they really want to unsubscribe or not this is much more beneficial for those people who have taken the effort to actually subscribe so many users they are still they don't really want to let go any one of the subscribers so they still linger to still ask them the last moment do you really want to unsubscribe and if they are actually typing out yes and then unsubscribing that means they are 100% sure that they really really want to unsubscribe example nine. which one is a better ux well the first one is where we have a user interface of a, a apparel store where you have a t-shirt with a uh, photograph of a woman uh, wearing the particular uh, design there is the name of the product and then there is the cost of the product and there is an option a drop down option of color choice in the b there is the same image that is there there is a name of the product there is a price of the product and then there are four uh, different colors of the same t-shirt that is available which one is a better ux well the b is a better user experience if you have five or less than five variation or options if you have more than um, four or five colors definitely a drop down is a better choice because otherwise you will have a very cluttered um, user interface uh, just layering for uh, just layering 10 uh, or 15 color swatches will be a very clumsy design example 10 this is the last one let's see how you pass this one which one is a better ux so this is a navigation bar of a website maybe where we have four navigation links home about products and contact us in the first one the product section is highlighted by making it bold and there is a blue accent color just below the product on the other one they are all the text are little bit dim and the product the selected product is highlighted or it stands out Yes, the best way to differentiate visited state is by changing of colors and always remember to make the selected state darker than the other states. So if you see all these particular texts are dimmed and the selected text is bolder as well as darker in color. That's all folks. Hope you have liked the entire series. You can consume the series in parts as well as the entire playlist. Always understand, UX is a process and needs constant improvement. 
Many times there is no fixed right or wrong and depends upon case to case basis and the product that you are delivering. Here I would like to mention a fantastic website called uxmovement.com. If you are an UX or UI designer, you must go through this plethora of examples that they have shown in the website. I would like to also say that this is not a paid promotion of the website and is entirely consulted for training and knowledge share purpose. If you have liked the entire series, kindly like, share and comment on the videos and if you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you can get all the notifications of our upcoming updates. Till we meet again, goodbye and God bless.